We are in the Easter season, and there are different seasons in the church, just like there are different seasons in God's creation and nature. And also in the Old Testament, God appointed seasons and feasts. Now, one of my favorite go-to scriptures is the uh, scripture that says, there is an appointed time for everything. And here at St. Mary's, we feel God calling us to a time of revival. You've heard us speak about this. Father Ken mentioned it last week in his homily. And so the idea is, is to call for a three-year revival, beginning on the Feast of Pentecost in a few weeks and ending on Pentecost of 2027. Now, I'm not going to try to lay out the whole vision for St. Mary's revival here this morning because everyone likes short homilies. But I do want to share with you five key points. The first point is revival is a gift from heaven. We can't make it happen. I know that. Our Lord Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And so this three-year revival plan, before anything else, it's a plea to God. God, revive us. God, send your fire, send your new life, pour out your spirit, breathe your spirit upon us, send revival. So it's a plea to God, but it's based on a burning desire in the heart of God. Our Lord Jesus said, I have come to set a fire on the earth and how I wish it were already blazing. And so this longing for revival, again, it's just a response to the longing of the heart of Jesus. You could say it's, a, it's like a three-year, yes, Lord. We want to see your fire on the earth too. We want to see people filled with the fire of your love. We want to see the fire of faith spread throughout this city and throughout the world. So it's kind of also an act of faith. We do believe that our God is a mighty God. And he offers us endless resources. And so we, we do know that without Jesus, we can do nothing. And also, as Paul says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. The third point is the call to revival. It's a call to move. There are two basic states, a state of rest and a state of motion, a state of waiting and a state of moving, kind of like the chosen people. When they escaped Egypt, they wandered through the desert for 40 years. And during that time, as they were wandering towards the promised land, during that time, they were being led by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. And so they were following this mysterious cloud, this mysterious presence. But what's interesting, if you look at the scripture, They'd be following the cloud, and then the cloud would stop. So guess what they would do? They would stop, and they would set up camp, and they would wait. And if the cloud just stayed there, they would just stay there, sometimes for days, sometimes for weeks. They would just wait. And then they'd notice the clouds start to move again, so guess what they would do? They'd break camp and start moving again. And it's a basic principle in spiritual life. You know, there are times in the spiritual life where we need to simply wait. It's not good if a person can't at times wait. Scripture commands us to wait upon the Lord. Father Bob taught us to learn to wait on the Lord. And so there are times we need to wait, but then there are other times we need to move. We need to respond. We need to see what the Spirit is doing and follow the Lord's call. And so, uh, so again, this, this call to revival, it's a call to move. The fourth point this revival, it's all about, obviously, bringing souls to Christ, bringing people to Jesus who gives us eternal life, who is the Savior. In the Acts of the Apostles today, we hear Peter proclaiming, Repent, therefore, and turn to God that your sins may be wiped out. I love that expression, your sins wiped out. Now, I'm going to teach you how to read the Bible. When you read the Bible and you read something like that, you say to the Lord, Lord, sign me up. Because God's word is alive and active. When we're reading scripture, he's speaking to us. 
He's, he's imparting what's written to us. And that's why I love to underline. When I underline something, it's me saying, Lord, I'll take that. Sign me up. And so the Lord, he wants us. He wants us to repent. He wants to wipe out our sins. And in the gospel today, we, the Lord Jesus, he, he says to the, uh, to the apostles, he, he says to them, peace be with you. What's he doing? He is imparting heavenly peace into the hearts and souls of his disciples. This is an eternal peace. He's giving the disciples what we call a first installment of heavenly peace, the peace of heaven and the joy and the love that goes with it. So again, another example. Oh, you underline that. Sign me up, Lord. I'll take that. And so this, this, this grace that the Lord Jesus offers us, he wants us to proclaim it to the world, to tell everyone about the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, this revival is all about bringing souls to Christ. It's kind of like the New Testament gives us the image of fishing. The Lord Jesus, many of his disciples were fishermen, and he called them to follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So in a sense, you know, we're, we're going out fishing. We're going out to, to, to uh, catch souls, to win souls for Christ. And so you, if you can imagine St. Mary's Parish, imagine we had a nice, big fishing vessel. Beautiful, you know, squeaky clean, everything's nicely set up. Well, a time of revival is a time to say, okay, it's time to lift anchor and leave the harbor and go out into the deep waters and go fishing. So what I'm saying to you this weekend is let's go fishing. That's the plan. The Lord wants us to bring souls to him, so we need to, to do the work he's calling us to do. And the fifth and last point is a call to revival. It's also a call for us as a parish to shine more brightly. You know, a while ago I, I heard uh, about an airline pilot flying across the ocean at night, and he noticed the, these lights middle of the ocean and so he took a picture and put it on social media and said look at this what's this and of course the immediate reaction it must be ufos it must be russian secret military operation or whatever but then a few kind of uh, people who knew what was what it was they just re replied they say that's that's a fishing vessel that's a light array that at night they just turn on a huge arrays of light and guess what it does <laughs> it just attracts the fish kind of an easier way to do fishing. You know, if you have a fishing boat that's out fishing and it's not shining brightly, it can spend a lot of energy and, and fuel and hardly catch anything. And so revival is very much about going out, bringing people to Christ, but it's just as much and maybe more about being a church that shines brightly. St. Mary's should be a place that's irresistible. A person comes here for the first time and they have to come back next week because they experience the kingdom of God, the love of God. And not only do they have to come back, they need to bring their friends. And so that's the vision to pray, to ask the Lord, Lord, how can we be a parish that shines brightly and that draws people to you and to eternal life? So that's my basic intro this weekend.